we're going to Silver Lake. It's 10 minutes away. Yeah. From where I was born and raised. But I grew up right around here too. Where'd you go to high school, by the way? Van Nuys High School. I went to Loyola. Oh yeah, you smart went to that kids. old guy school where you were smart yell leader. It was only for football. And this is how we got chicks. You became a male cheerleader to get chicks? We all did. I went to a all-male high school. Now, all the cool guys became a yell leader, and yes, I was one. And yes, we got all the girls. I'd like to see the field where you were a cheerleader. Maybe you can go reenact some of your cheers for me. L, 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 O, Y. O, 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 L, A. L, O, Y, O, L, A. Loyola, Loyola, Loyola. I think that's it. O, 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 M, G. <laughs> ew, 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 ew. <laughs> Go man boobs. <laughs> Terry is the only guy I know that can be a mascot without wearing a costume. I mean, look at him. Look how goofy he is. Let me tell you about our next patient. Charlie does not have an ear. So no hearing. Apparently, he had some surgeries with his ear in the past. What do you have? Um, I don't know what he's done. Let's just pull, let's look at his photos. When a child is born without an ear, it is usually a congenital deformity. And that can be hereditary, which means you inherit it from someone in your family, or it could have been caused by the environment. OK, let me show you these. This Charlie. Obviously, looks like he's in a band. Nothing going on. Oh, oh yeah, okay. OK. So some surgery. Right. It's like there's some type of a skin graft or yeah. some reconstruction somewhere. Right. Normal looking right here. Hey, I'm going to ask you a question. Well. You know, don't make fun of me, but I'm going to show you something. I think I may have an umbilical hernia. Okay. Let me see. You know what? Let me see something. Does that hurt? Uh, yeah, it does. That's an incarcerated umbilical hernia. You actually sure. need to get that fixed. You got to fix it. You do it for me? Yeah. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon but I also was board certified in general surgeries. And that's good because Paul has a very significant problem and it really is an urgent matter. This is actually kind of mildly urgent. But let's no. just, let's go see Charlie. Yeah. Oh my goodness, hi there. How are you doing? I'm Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Oh, Dr. Thank Nassim. you so much Jerry for coming, love guys. The accent. Thank you, it. guys. I am indeed. Come on in. I'm feeling a little nervous about meeting the doctors today. I'm always a bit of a scaredy cat when it comes to surgery and things like that, but I'm just really excited to hear what the possibilities are. This is Brandy. Hi, nice Brandy? to meet you, Brandy. You're, you're Charlie's other half? I am not, I'm his bandmate. Bandmate. Hello. Bandmate. Nice to meet Debrun. you. Nice to meet Brandy. you. Have a seat, guys. So you're from Scotland? I am, yes. OK, and so what brought you to America? Uh, music, actually. I came out to, to record an album and ended up moving out here. So these are yours? Yes, they are. Can you pick one of these up and just play a little something for us? Uh, I started playing music at a really young age. By the time I was 14 or 15, I started uh, playing in, in bars and started making a little bit of money. I'm burning by the noise outside. I stand in silence, terrified. I should walk away if you open your mouth. The fact that Charlie has only one ear and really has a limited ability to hear, it's amazing that he's got such musical talent. Wow, that was beautiful. <laughs> you guys are great together. Oh, thank you. But actually, that kind of brings us to the point then. You only have hearing in the right ear? I do. Yeah, I was born with what I believe to be golden heart syndrome. Mm -hmm. It's just like the ear didn't form, and uh, I think my jaw is slightly affected. Golden heart syndrome is congenital underdevelopment of 
the ears, the nose, the soft palate, the lip and the mandible. So what was it like growing up with this? One of the, the first memories I, I have of being alive was being in about three, waking up in a hospital in Edinburgh with, you know, a bandage on my head and some kind of operation had been done. And what surgeries? So as far as I know, uh, skin removal. So, so this earlobe remnant here is what you were born with? Yes. And uh, the underlying whatever we see was not implanted. You were that's born all with you're that. born with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've had no Nothing. attempts at ear reconstruction at all. At all. No. Wow. There were definitely moments growing up where I was really self-conscious. I would think about the fact that I'm different or not complete. But I was lucky that my mom and dad were so supportive and loving. They always gave me great confidence in my ability and myself. And now you're in your 30s? Yeah. And we're here. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what's going on? There is an element of, you know, not being normal. I feel a little incomplete. Well, you're an entertainer. And part of being an entertainer is how you look. Yeah. Right? I think living in Los Angeles, you definitely become more aware of your looks and things like that. They like their music to sound and look good, and that's rock and roll. What do you think you'd like to have for an ear on the left side there? I would, Same thing as the right, or honestly, what, what do you think? I mean, just symmetry, that would be amazing. I think the best really way for us to evaluate that and talk to you about what can we do, first is we gotta get up and examine your ear. Okay, let's or go and do the that remnant thing, you have there. Can you turn your head? So here's your lobe. Yeah. Here's part of some trago cartilage or something yeah. here. Okay. Ears are complex structures that plastic surgeons have always had a difficult time reconstructing because you can never make it look like you're born with an ear. And Charlie, he has pretty much nothing except just a little piece of earlobe. There are two ways to actually take care of this. And the way that we've all been trained with, especially as plastic surgeons, is a surgical procedure called microtia repair. That usually involves three stages. What is involved is making an incision here, taking a nice big piece of rib, mm -hmm. and then putting it underneath your skin after we carve it and make somewhat of an ear. Mm -hmm. And then with those other stages, we start to develop and try to make it look somewhat normal like your right ear. Mm -hmm. And at the most, you probably would have about a 60% similarity. It will look like an ear, but not nearly as good as your other ear. Yeah. But now we're in a new age. You can actually have a prosthetic ear put in place. It involves no surgery and no risk, which will look exactly like the other ear. The non-surgical way with the prosthesis is pretty much immediate. How often do we find solutions that are quick, painless, risk-free, and perfect? Yeah, <laughs> with the surgeries that we do? Never. Never. So putting those two together, mm. what do you think? I think I'm gonna go with the prosthetic. You know, I think that, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. The best case scenario for me is having perfect symmetry of uh, my left ear to my right ear. I think we're all in agreement with that. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm kind of flabbergasted that I'm gonna have an ear for the first time, and I just can't even begin to know what that's gonna feel like. That was interesting, huh? Nice guy. Very, very nice. I'm glad that Charlie has made the right decision. So he's, checking, he's picking the prosthesis. Yeah, I mean, that's the way to go. There. And I have the right guy for him. You I do? have a guy who does prosthetics, and he used to work for the CIA. Really? So then you know he's good. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Hi there. Hi. I, I'm here to see the doctor. It's Charlie Clark. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and sign in. I don't really know what to expect. I think I'm more curious than anything to see what the possibilities are for someone with my condition. Hello, my friend. How are you doing? Good How to are see you? you. I'm good, thank you. Good Pleasure to you know see you again. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. So, I want to you, I, we want to introduce you to Robert. Robert right. is the premier prosthetic guy who has done all kinds of things for the CIA. So you got a spy working, working yeah. on you now. It's you know the Tom Cruise movies where uh -huh. he's Mission Impossible, he's got the mask and you go, oh, yeah, that's like not that. possible? Yeah. Is that possible, Robert? It is possible. I'm really excited to have Robert help us out today. Think of this as Special Ops Ear Division. 
So Robert, how close can you match this ear to his normal ear? Exactitude. Really? Yes. Exactly. Yeah, yes. Go. You ready, buddy? Let's, let's go. For Charlie's ear molding today, we'll use liquid silicone to coat both sides of Charlie's head, making an impression of both his good right ear and the left side, where his ear is missing. After the silicone is done drying, we'll have perfect impressions from which to devise Charlie a mirror image of his right ear to wear on the left side of his head, giving Charlie the symmetrical appearance he's always desired. This is silicone, all right? And it comes out this tube. OK, now, here we go. How long does it take to set? Three minutes. It's actually really cool to see silicone be used on the outside of the body to make a positive change for someone, because I'm so used to putting silicone inside of the body. The reason why Robert needs to take a mold on the side that's missing an ear is because there is a little piece of ear left there. The skin is a little bit different there, and you have to have an ear that's going to fit perfectly onto whatever template is there. I might get some peach fuzz here, Charlie. Easy does it. There we go. Awesome. Great. Good impression. Good. Just hold still. I got to pull. You OK? Yeah, fine. Cool. Got it. Got it. Look at there. Not turn on. Look at there. Yeah. It's perfect. Robert's mold came out perfectly. I just can't wait till I see Charlie with that new prosthetic ear in place. I mean, he's going to look incredible. Robert makes a very good impression, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> As this whole process is wrapping up, it's finally hitting me. It's the first time in my life that I'll actually have two ears. All sorts of things are going through my mind. They're good. They're all good. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Big first guys. Step to Some will be here to clean up. Well, I'm a little nervous, but you, obviously you know why I'm here. You guys are going to play real operations. Yes. With any type of surgical procedure, there's always risks. And just like everybody else, you get a little bit of anxiety. It is under a general anesthesia, and you never know. How are you? I'm good, buddy. You know what's weird? Normally, I sleep really well before surgery. Of course, but I didn't sleep at all. It wasn't so much the anxiety. It was the massive hangover that got me. Very <laughs> <laughs> stupid ass joke. All kidding aside, let's talk about what we're going to do, OK? So just so you, you guys know, he has an incarcerated umbilical hernia. I've done this operation, what, 10,000 times? This is a little bit different for me, all right? Right? You're my partner, you're my buddy, you're my best buddy, right? I want to make sure this is good for you. Of course. Operating on a friend is different than operating on someone you don't know very well. But once I get into the surgical mode, I forget that it's Paul. I forget that I love the guy. And at the end of the day, I'm going to do everything by the book, and he's going to get my A game. You know I love you. Of course. I'm not kidding, right? Yeah. I'm going to take care of you, all right? I've got to be honest with you. I'm a little bit nervous, because although this is right up my alley, uh, it's Paul. So it's personal. Today for Paul's surgery, I'm going to make an incision around the lower half of his belly button. Then I'll isolate the defect that is causing his intestinal organs to pop through his abdominal wall and get stuck in there. Next, I will amputate the piece of organ that is stuck and close up the hernia with sutures. OK, no more joking around. Let's fix Paul. So first thing we're going to do is make an incision from about a th the 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock position around his belly button. This will probably take me a little bit longer than it usually would, because I'm being extra, extra, extra careful. You might even say paranoid. Chances of a complication with a doctor, particularly a doctor you know, is higher. Doctors in general have a significantly higher rate of complications than other patients. We think that's because we let the patient, who is a doctor, dictate their course. And that's never a good idea. 
So there it is. It's Whoa. pretty significant. This is what was stuck in his hernia sac. This is the part that won't go back in. This is called the omentum. The omentum is what drapes all over the entire abdominal organ system. If that piece of omentum became more strangulated and it actually died, that could lead to Paul getting septic and potentially dying. So here it is. This is what was stuck. And look, it's already looking a little not that happy. It's got that sort of brown, woody appearance of tissues that don't have good blood supply. So now my job is to close up the hernial defect. What the hell is this? A little hernia above it, too. You've got a little epigastric hernia right above it. Of course, Paul would have a complicated hernia. Mm -hmm. Paul has what we call an epigastric hernia, which is a defect in the abdominal wall muscles halfway between the belly button and the chest bone. So essentially, he's even more complicated than I thought preoperatively. Can't just have something simple. It's Paul Massive. It's kind of something weird. There you go. It's not going anywhere. Feel that, Heidi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's put this belly button back down where it belongs. It's good, right? It's awesome. Yeah. OK. All right, well, that's it. Hey, how are you? Great. How's he doing? Mm. Really? Better now. <laughs> see, I see a nightmare. It's a little bit of a keto nightmare. Not a nightmare. Paul's recuperating in the hotel room with my private nurse, and I really want to make sure he's not developing any post-operative complications, and I just want to see how my buddy's doing. Hey! How are you? Wow. How are you? Huh? How you doing? How you feel? Um, more right here. Well, there is where you had the two hernias, right? What do you mean, mean two? Yeah, one here. No, you had a belly button hernia yeah. and a hernia above it. First hernia is already a surprise. But then being told that I have an epigastric hernia? Thank God Terry found that one. Congenital weaknesses of the abdominal wall. You're just a lesser human than yeah, someone like me with no hernia. The reason it wasn't reducible is because the opening was about four millimeters, and your organs basically poked through two of them and were completely stuck. I had to amputate the stuff in there, cut it off. Yeah, so you're missing some organs now. That means I'll lose weight a lot easier. <laughs> Let me see what you're looking like. All right, let's see. Oh, you That hurt? I should have warned you about that, I guess, huh? Whoa. Ooh, you are swollen. Oh my god, I am swollen. Yeah, you really are swollen. But you're good. If Paul continues to heal, he has a very good prognosis. The chance that his umbilical hernia will recur is extraordinarily low. You recover. Don't let anything bad happen, OK? I won't. I'll be a good boy. OK. I'll be good. All right, thank you for that. All right, blah, blah. Thank you. I'll see you. Hi there. Charlie, hey. how are you, good buddy? To good you, to see you. Good to see you. I've waited 37 years for this, and I just don't really know what to expect and how it's going to feel having that added part on my on my head. Okay, you ready for this? I am. Charlie? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Finished. That Tinted. is insane. Isn't that amazing? No matter how good of surgeons we are, there's no way that Terry and I could have built Charlie an ear that looked like this. Charlie, you made the right choice. I mean, if you saw that lying on the floor, you're walking by and you saw some of your like that lying on the floor, you would go, oh my god. It's so realistic. It's a little, uh, eerie. <laughs> now I'm going to put the adhesive on the back of it. And once the adhesive dries, I'm going to put it on you. OK. And you can leave it on all day. But when you go to bed at night, you have to take it off and let your skin breathe. Robert is using a medical grade adhesive, which is specifically designed to allow the ear to be placed in place and prevent it from falling off with any kind of brushing movement or wearing of sunglasses. That goes under there, just like that. 
and then that goes right up here like that and then that earlobe goes into the area where we don't have any of the adhesive, right? Because that fits right in, right in there like that, see? Then you press down. All right. That is amazing. You look straight at us now. Wow. That is beyond cool. If I was walking by someone who had this ear attached to the side of the head, there's no way in a million years that I would know that this was a prosthetic ear. Robert, you nailed it. This prosthetic ear looks beautiful. You ready, my friend? I am. <laughs> Let's do it. Da, 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 da. Da, da. Drum roll, please. Oh, my goodness. Huh? Wow. Wow. That is insane. It's hard to get your head it's around. That's perfect. You know, right. you know, wow. Seeing myself for two years for the first time is incredible. I feel like I'm looking at something completely new. This is definitely better than I expected. It's more than I could hope for. The surgical result would be nothing like this. Yeah. It, be, it would be 40% yeah. at, at the most of this. It would look like a blob. For my whole life, I've been living without one ear on one side of my head. And for as long as I can remember, it made me feel incomplete. And now with the help of Dr. Nassif, Dr. Dubro, and Robert Barron, I'm all ears. My new ear perfectly matches my right ear, and I now have the symmetry I've always wanted. And best of all, I'm hopeful about pursuing my music career without worrying about my appearance. Yeah. Thank you. You get a big, you get a big hug. <laughs> yeah, you Thanks. too. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we just Congratulations.